that I was a menace to society and my decisions ended up landing me in prison with a 30 to life sentence. I got caught. Yeah, you know, one of the things, uh, my uncles, they were all from Compton. I have a lot of family also in San Jose. So two of my uncles were from San Jose. One of them was actually a member of the NF. But family's family. And uh, I loved them all the same too. So we had a, a good history as far as, you know, the gang life's concerned. You know, very well very established. Well schooled. All the children, all the kids, we all knew what time it was. You keep your mouth shut. You do anything, you hold your mug. And uh, everything was going to be all right. 1992, we're going, we're going down uh, Pioneer Boulevard towards Alondra in Norwalk. And this car started coming behind us. And I started to see somebody like reaching out the car. So I reached back and I extended the bar. And I lit up the car. Boom, boom, boom. And to actually see the damage, when every time it hit, it was like sparks coming off the car. You know, and I ended up getting arrested for that later on. And um, I ended up beating the case, you know, and uh, I got out and shortly after, about maybe three months later, I ended up picking up my life crime on Super Bowl Sunday of uh, 1993. I was involved in a murder, gang-related murder off of 166 and Norwalk Boulevard. I uh, had uh, four victims, one died. You know, you don't really understand the magnitude of your actions until you're faced to have to deal with it and the gravity of the ripple effect and the impact it has not only on my family, uh, on the victim's family. Uh, you don't understand all that. And it weighs much more deeper than just a street and a name. And at the time you think that everything revolves around the pride of the barrio and, and the name of what we're doing because mentally, as I explained to the parole board, when they asked, how do you justify your actions back then? How did you make it psychologically acceptable to do the things you were doing? And it takes a lot of soul searching, but to me, it was normal. You know, when you're part of a gang, there's rules, unwritten rules. If you're a rival and you're in my area, instantly, it's reaction, normal reactions. These things have been ingrained in me since I was a kid. So I normalized that. To me, it was normal. But after 25 years of incarceration, I came to learn that it was not normal that I was a menace to society, and my decisions ended up landing me in prison with a 30 to life sentence. I got caught. I got caught. Now mind you, I wasn't alone, but I rode the whole beef. I was the only one arrested, and I was the only one who did time. I loved my homies then, and I love them now. And I pray for them, and I wish the best for them all, regardless of the changes that I've chose for my life. No one has to respect those changes but me, because I'm the one that has to look in a mirror and decide to live my life. I'm the one that's going to have to stand before God and give an account. No one else. I'm the one that had to find a genuine remorse for my actions and my